everyone. Today I'm finally getting around to assembling my XR50 motor. Uh, for those of you following along, you'll know it's the rotary motor for my Mercedes SLR50 go-kart. Uh, for those of you just tuning in, this motor is for my go-kart. There's one side of the plate that I had machined. I got all the pits out of it from all the rust. And now I'm going to start with assembling the new rotor along with the new needle bearing assembly. Those are the clips that hold the needle bearing in. And these little pieces right here, those are one side for the rotor seal. And these itty bitty pieces there, those are the springs that keep tension against the side plate for the seals. So when I'm placing these seals, I make sure that all the shiny sides are up. That's what the manufacturer recommends. And also I'm going to use my apex seal to sort of guide those into place. Next, I need to put the longer spring seals. And when you're installing these, they need to face with the ends facing up and obviously the shiny side facing out. Now to keep this in place when we go to assemble it on the plate, I'm just gonna put some assembly grease on it. Not too much just enough to keep the seals in place as it faces down. Now this red mark that I'm putting there, that's basically your, your line that you want all your pieces to line up with. And I'll explain that in a second. Here's my crankshaft, or eccentric shaft as it is called. Magneto. It's been drilled out because I've had the crankshaft rebalance. The crankshaft was rebuilt, rebalanced. A little keyway for my Magneto. take a little bit of a tap to get it on. No extreme force so nothing gets damaged. I don't actually have a key for the clutch nut but as long as I can tighten it into place I have no problem with that. The screwdriver is just to hold it in place as I'm tightening. I'm not going to put too much force on it because I don't want to break anything. A little bit of a tap, that should be tight enough. Now to get back to that red line that we put on there, you want the hole of the eccentric shaft to be pointing towards that and also your rotor points towards that as well. So all three points will line up and that'll be your top dead center. At this point, I'm going to be putting on the other side seals, starting with the corner seals. Moving on to those side seals with the ends of the springs facing up. Shiny side out. At 
this point, I'm going to put on my apex seals and note that the spring is going to slide in afterwards. So I'm just going to put one half of my apex seal on now. The spring will not be pushing them out at this point. So I can put the chamber onto this plate. This is the chamber. It's new, as you can see, the last one was busted from the the ice, I guess, that had expanded and exploded in there. Not to forget my O-ring seals. And next we're going to use some well sealant. I couldn't get this well sealant in Canada, but with a few orders from Germany, I was able to get all the parts I needed. The nice part about the well sealant is that it does not dry. So if you would ever need to take this casing back apart, it would come apart with ease. Apply a thin layer to all the edges so that when I put it back onto the other flat surface, it doesn't spread into the chamber itself. Wiping off any excess that I might have got inside the chamber. It should be ready to go to face down against this plate. These are just the pegs that hold the plate in place. Give those a little tap. And now I can put the springs in for my apex seals and the other piece. These are two piece apex seals. Now I'm going to pour some of this two-stroke go-kart motor oil into this oiler and I'm going to use the actual two-stroke oil to lube all my seals. Most importantly, get some down into that main bearing along all the edges of our seals, our side plate seals, and it will drain down into the apex seal. and on the other side of the flat plate. When the side seal rolls around, it should gather some of that oil. I'm sure the motor will smoke quite a bit when I start it up, but that's okay. And at this point, I'm ready to apply more sealant. The side's a little bit more tricky because I'm trying to get all the sealant covering on the surface without getting any of the sealant on the actual rotor. Give it a little wipe for good luck anyway. And now I'm ready to put the other side of my plate on. A little bit of oil on the bearing and on the face. And I'm ready to put my bolts in.
first thing is we have five long bolts and we have 10 short bolts. First, I'm going to install the five longer bolts. Make sure those are in place so I don't confuse them. And then install the other 10, the shorter ones. With anything mechanical like this, you always want to cross back and forth between tightening. It just ensures that the surface comes down even. Same principle as tightening a tire. Now I know this is aluminum, so our torque isn't going to be too high on this. We're going to set it at 15 newton meters. Start torquing everything down. On a torque wrench, you want to make sure that you go to the click and not past the click. If you go past the click, you could risk over tightening. And with anything aluminum, as some of the experienced people might know, it likes to strip easy. So ensuring that accuracy is key. 15 newton meters only. Tightening is complete. Turning the motor, just ensuring that there is compression in the motor, none of the seals fell out. Let's put on this clutch. There's a little keyway that goes on for this sprocket. I also had to have it balanced with the crankshaft after the crankshaft was rebuilt. clutch has a little bit of grease on it, not too much. Tightening down that center crankshaft nut. The only thing left to do is put on all the its and pieces. Here's the other side of the carburetor flange. Again, I'm not going to put any torque on it, I'm just going to tighten it. This is the chassis motor mounts. And this is the starter assembly along with the fuel pump. The fuel pump is in my right hand. And you can see the starter is that brass looking piece. The fuel
fuel pump has a little vacuum line. Tighten that vacuum line with a zip tie like I did. Cut it off. There's one little bolt that holds this cover on. Put it on. And it's ready to go back in the cart. Thanks for watching everybody. Stay tuned for the startup.